We want to talk to you today, saints, from our hearts. Um, so in Hebrews chapter 12, if you will turn there. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here. The first one will be in Hebrews 12. When you have it, say amen. And then stand with us, if you will. <clears throat> to try to keep this somewhat in context, I'm going to read. Uh, and, I, and I realize that this, when these words written on the scroll was written, it was not celebrated like it is here in this book. This was man's doing. It was not uh, the doing of the writers. Everything was written on a scroll and we didn't have these paragraphs. He didn't have chapters and all that. But for our sake and help and clarity is written, okay? Okay, Hebrews chapter 12 saying that to say this. Starting at verse 11. All right, we're going to read verses 11 through, let's see, verses, let me see. Okay, I want to sort of, yeah, I want to start at verse 11, not no chastening. Verse 11, then we'll go down through 16. Okay. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after what it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to them which are exercised thereby. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Peace with all men, and holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there, there be, be any fornicator or, or profane, profane person, person as Esau, saw, who for one, one morsel, morsel of meat sold his, his birthright. birthright. Okay. Hold on to that. Now turn to First Peter chapter 1, I believe. We want to start at verse 13 and read down through the end of chapter 1. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conform yourself to the former lust, as in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning year in fear. For as much as we know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the traditions from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing we have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, to unfeign love of the brethren. See that you love one another, with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all the flesh is as grass, 
and all the glory of man as a flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Now we're going to read down through chapter 2, verse 3. So I'm going to read 25. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached to you. And for a man of sad, all malice, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speaking. As, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so, so be, you have tasted, tasted that the Lord, Lord is gracious. gracious. Pray with us now. Our Father which art in heaven, you are with us. Lord, we, we know that there's just no mistake about that. You're with yes. us. We, we sense your power, your presence, your word tells us so. God, we've seen the acts of God. We've seen the, the inspiration of the Almighty. You've kept us these many years. We, we, we see it and we thank you, Father. We, we acknowledge your presence and your Holy Son, your Holy Spirit. Oh God, and apart from you, we recognize we can do nothing. Yes. But through God, we shall do valiantly. Yes. We thank you and acknowledge your goodness, your presence, your Holy Spirit, your mercy. Take control. Bless us. Speak through us now. These are your people and the sheep of your pastor. But therefore, Lord, we yield over to you now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, what I, will, what I realize, saints, is that is diff people are on different levels here. Everybody's not on the same level. Some people are on a um, lower level. When I say lower level, I mean they may not be as mature or has grown in the faith as others. So recognize when we're sharing this word, we're not addressing it blanketly as though everybody is in this very same category. I'm, I'm trying to, so that we all can have an open mind. But when we share through the spirit of God, we want you to be able to know what God is saying to you in this. And uh, as you have been able to discern good and evil and what God is saying to you, even though uh, there may be some instructions and admonitions, receive what God, the Holy Spirit is saying to you individually. As I said, everybody's not on the same plane. All right. But the word can help us. Somebody is on a different level and, and God is speaking to you. Well, you're, although you're on a different level, you can take this word and apply it to where you are and become better. That's right. But by no means are we to feel condemned. By no means, all right? So uh, I'm saying all that to say that the Lord was just uh, kind of reiterating to my heart about holiness. And God said, prepare the people uh, No, he said, teach the people about holy living. And I read two scriptures here. I want you to go back and look at it with me. In Hebrews 12 Verses 14 and 15, one, if you'll read that again. For they that say... 12. 12, I'm sorry, I'm in 11. Okay. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. Okay, pause for a moment now. Now, listen to what the scriptures are saying. And the Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. Is that right? And um, in preparing the people to meet the Lord, he said, follow peace with all men, right? Yes. And holiness, without which... No man should see the Lord. So that gives me a real concern. 
You know what I'm saying? Because this is not the, the words of man, right? Amen. This is the word that comes from God. And so he's saying holiness. And then the other scripture in Peter, first Peter. Okay, started, I think it's, uh, what is it, 14? 14. 13. 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Keep reading. For, um, I'm sorry, and if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a land without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. That's good. Mm -hmm. So now look at the word of God again. Let's look a little closer. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that what? Proceedeth out the mouth of God. So we have a mandate from God is to live according to the word. And every, each one of us must have this sense of diligence in respect to God's word, right? Amen. So, him that honor God in taking the word to live it, God said he would honor, right? Amen. So, um, as I thought about that, there's a lot of questions that people have, you know, in and, 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 and Hebrews that people were going through, okay? So that we could make it a little plainer. In Hebrews they were going through. In Peter they were going through. Because they were facing things that was not taken away from them right away. They were suffering, right? When we are going through and when we suffer, sometimes there's a tendency to be irritated and frustrated. And sometimes there can even be frustrating frustration at the Lord. If we can be honest, right? So these admonitions are to help us to keep focus. Somebody say focus. Focus. As long as we keep focus, then we can give God the praise and the glory, do his name in the midst of the things that we go through, right? And it is important that we be thankful so that we won't become bitter, right? Now, see, I've been there. I know what I'm saying. Because sometimes you can go through and you feel like I'm doing the best I know how. And God, why is this? What is this all about? Why is this going on? But uh, I heard one guy and, and said this, a preacher said that, and when he said it, I was going through and I didn't appreciate it. He said, God don't owe you an explanation. <laughs> but it is true. It is true. He really doesn't owe us an explanation. I, my, I had a, a, a friend and some things were going down in his life. And... Um, he didn't understand what was going on. But he said, he said, God, what is this? As though he had grounds to contend with his maker. He literally looked up to heaven and said, God, what is this? Why are you, why are you letting this happen? And when I heard it, I thought, hmm, that's different. <laughs> but God 
It's big. Now think about it. I'm just food for thought. If I am a part of a thousand or five thousand piece puzzle and I can only see from my perspective one 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 five thousandth that's what I see but God sees the finished product he sees the picture with five thousand people in place do you think we need to trust in ourselves? What are you saying, brother? I'm saying that faith is the only resolution. Yes. And so the writer of Hebrews was telling, encouraging them about faith after he shared with them about the priesthood and how in the wilderness they murmured and complained and they were lost out and all of this stuff. And then he said, we have to be careful that we don't find ourselves in the same predicament of unbelief, right? So he goes on and then he talked about the high priest. He catches it up again and come back. And finally, after he talked and talked about the angels and uh, uh, Christ is better than the angels, better than the, uh, the, the priesthood, Aaron, the priest, high priest. He was better than Moses, better than all that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, in, in chapter 8, he turned around and said, now, the things that I've been saying to you, here, here's, here's the sum. Here's what I'm trying to say. Here's the point that I'm making. We have such a high priest. Yes. And then he went on and talked about the high priest. He talks about this tabernacle and he says mother thing. And then he says, cast not away your confidence because it pays great dividends. Yes. And then he says, he moves right on into the faith chapter. Yes. That was to help us, right? It was to help them, it was to help us to understand this is what pleases God, right? Yes. When I'm in a situation, when you're in a situation, it's not pity, but it's faith. Are you with me? Sometimes I want God to have pity on me, and, and he does. But what pleases him most is when I believe him and trust him, when I don't understand why. Yes. Are you with me? And also to trust in the integrity of who he is. Yes. You know, he's not like us. Mm -hmm. So we can't respond to him like we respond to each other. You know, don't having, not having confidence, not having trust, mm -hmm. because God is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. You know, and He says high, mm -hmm. and looks low. Amen. And we are low. <laughs> Amen. So you know, to discredit who He is by our murmuring and complaining mm -hmm. is not having faith. Exactly, and, and 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 that's that's the whole thing. How does faith look? What is faith like in action? What is faith like in, 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 in operation of, in a person's life? It is not murmuring and complaining. It's not criticizing. It's not speaking the wrong words. Right, not finding fault. We have all that in Numbers, right? Yes. In the book of Numbers, remember that? It is having an outlook that regardless of what it looked like, Joshua Caleb, Yes. It says we are well able. If the Lord delights in us, he will give us the land. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. Faith does not see the giants as somebody overwhelming. That's right. The ten spies came back and said, yeah, it's a, it's a good land. Yeah, he was good. He, he, he was right. It was a good land. But he didn't tell the whole story. They got giants over there. These giants are so big. And we ain't no match for them. So the children of Israel got so discouraged, they sat down and cried. <laughs> Joshua and Caleb said, wait, 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 wait. Come on, wait a minute. Everybody, listen, listen. The Bible says he stealed the people. Then he said, let's go up right away. We're well able. 
Are y'all seeing what, how faith operates? Yeah. He said, the people of the land, they are bread for us. Since the Lord delights in us, yes, he is faith. going to give us the land. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Are you seeing how faith operates? God is looking for faith in the midst of what we're going through. Somebody, are you understanding what God is saying? Not looking at the situations, but looking at the promise. When you look at the promise, you can have the right confession. Amen. You're looking at what God promised and faith, look at that, the goal of the promise. It don't look at the situation. It don't look at what we don't have. It doesn't look at how long we had it, how long we've been going through, you know, why is this not working for me? That's not faith. Faith look at the promise. So you got, let's say you got 60 people. And in the midst of 60 people, 30 of them are complaining. Now, that may not happen here, but I'm just trying to make a, you know. And so the Lord says, okay, come on, I'm trying to get us all to go in the same direction. Some are saying everything but what needs to be said. Yes. And God says, I remember talking to the Lord. I say, God, help this person. Help this. I said, I'm doing what I can. I said, wait a minute. (laughs) You're doing what you can? You know, I had to go back and check my theology out. (laughs) What God was saying is this. I need some support here, buddy. I, if, if, if I'm trying to lead a person in this direction and they're saying everything and, and wanting to go another direction, then look, look I, I made man in my image. I need some cooperation here. That's right. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? That's right. Now the judge shall live by what? Faith. Faith. Believe in God. You and I may be in situations, but it's not over. Hallelujah. The Bible says, look and consider Job, how the man went through, lost everything he had, lost his family and everything, but that was not the end of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that was the end of the Lord. If God gave a family, if it's destroyed, he can give you another family. God is able. God is able. Hallelujah. You know, uh, we taught a little while back about we being God access in the earth. So God, when we pray and we line up with his will, we are cooperating him and then he can do the work. Yes. But if some of us are cooperating and some of us are complaining, it hinders God's ability to work for us. Amen. Listen, all right. I won't attempt to bring you this way. And you draw back and begin to fuss and complain about why you got to go. All right, God said, let's go this way. Come on, we, uh, there's a promise here I got here. See, I tell you what, now, if you can go this way, then I'm going to say, do y'all see what, you see the problem that God had? And you it, see the problem? On, they come begin on. to be stuck <laughs> when they are both pulling yes. against each other. There's no forward motion. They're stuck in place. Amen. And, so and I heard the word of God say this year, we are supposed to be, come here, Mac. We are supposed to be, I'm excited. Get, get on this side. Get on this side. The Bible says we are supposed to be yoked together. Yeah. Are you hear what I'm saying? We're going, we, we're yoked together. Are you hear what I'm saying? This is how God works. This is what God is looking for in his life. If, so if you draw back with God and God has said, now I know you're suffering everything here, but those trials are fiery because I, I'm trying to work something out of you. I'm trying to work a little submission. Let, lighten up, Larry Heron. Okay. But God, hallelujah. You know, that reminds me in numbers about Moses, uh, uh, Miriam and Aaron. And God was giving Moses a direction. And then he made a choice to get married to an Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, his brother and his sister, the prophetess, 
Amen. And the priest. Look at that. The prophetess and the priest Come on here. started murmuring Woo. and complaining. Woo. Now listen to what they said. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Mm. Okay, you know, you know how we get, I'm not the, uh, the apostle, not the only one anointed. I'm anointed too. Oh, Lord, I didn't mean to say that like that. <laughs> has he not spoken through us also? We hear from God just like the man of God do. <laughs> but you have to remember you're not the point man. All right. Appointed by God <laughs> to lead the prophet and the priest. My God. Amen. That's a difference. You're getting me excited here, girl. <laughs> <laughs> now listen. Mm. See, God sees everything and he hears everything. Mm. And the Lord, not Moses, mm, mm, mm. come on now, mm, mm, mm. Moses didn't hear this thing, <laughs> hallelujah, it was the Lord. Mm. Now the man Moses was very humble, listen mm. to me say, Lord Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. the Bible testified that Moses was, a, uh, Moses was very humble more than all the men who was on the face of the earth. Okay, now wait, wait, wait. Let, let's, let's pause right here now. So this man, he wouldn't, he wouldn't handle problems. The way he operated, I wouldn't take that. He ought to deal with these people. He ought to do this and he ought to that. He ought to do that and he ought to do that. But the Bible says, whenever there was a complaint, Moses grabbed somebody in the collar and began to straighten them out. Uh oh he didn't say that. Said he was the meekest man on the face of the earth. He fell on his face before God. In other words, God, you handle this. Hallelujah. I, I just want to throw that but in listen there. What, <laughs> But listen at this situation, because it's going to help us. Yes. It helped me. Now, suddenly the Lord, now, Moses didn't call Aaron and Miriam in. But the Lord said, suddenly, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, come out, you three, mm. the three of you, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle meeting. So the three came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of a cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. Then he said, listen to this, saints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how God operates. Mm -hmm. This is how he view things. Mm -hmm. Hear now my words. Mm -hmm. if, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. Mm -hmm. I speak to him in a dream. Now, I'm a, this is how I'm going to communicate to the prophet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not so with my servant Moses. Mm -hmm. He is faithful mm -hmm. in all my house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I speak with him mm -hmm. face to face. My God. I'm not going to speak to him in a dream. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give him a vision. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to speak right in his face. Mm, 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 Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Even plainly, I ain't, I'm not even going to speak to him in parables. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak plainly and not in a dark saying. Mm, mm, mm. And he sees the form of the Lord. He knows me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Why then were you not afraid? To speak against my servant Moses. My God, my God. So the anger of the Lord, not Moses' anger, mm -hmm. the anger of the Lord was aroused against them mm -hmm. and he departed. My God. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, mm -hmm. as white as snow. Mm -hmm. Then Aaron turned toward Miriam. And there she was, a leper. Mm. So Aaron said to Moses, oh, my Lord, 
please do not lay this sin on us. Now, see, now he recognized Moses as Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. My God. It's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Please do not lay this sin on us, mm -hmm. and which we have done foolishly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and which we have sinned. Mm -hmm. Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of her when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, listen to God. Please hear, please heal her, O Lord. Mm -hmm. I pray. Then the Lord said to Moses, if her father, this is how God felt about her because of what she did. If her father but spit in her face, mm -hmm. would she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and afterwards she may be received again. Now, the, my point is this. God's judgment on uh, Miriam. God's judgment on Miriam stopped the whole camp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They couldn't go forward. Yes. They couldn't go backwards. Mm -hmm. They couldn't go to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. They had to stay in place mm -hmm. until Miriam's leprosy had gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One person. Yes, yes. I don't know how many thousand yes. of people were in that camp. They said some, somewhere it said it was like 167,000 people. Mm -hmm. But God stopped it. Yes. The journey for one person that was out of order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It tells me God mm -hmm. takes sin seriously. Yes, he does. And so we should. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's good. It's so important. So when we're talking in terms of holiness, we need to understand how faith works. Holiness is separation. Uh, let me do another demonstration. Let me get these three here. If you come and stand together, just come stand, all three of you, yes. Now I'm going to pull. You come here, Josie. I'm going to take you over here. Now when we get saved, this is what happened. He pulls us out and he separates us. For his purpose. Mm -hmm. So now, their purpose is one thing, but her purpose is for the Lord. So she's been set apart for the Lord. And so what she will have to do now is begin to renew her mind and educate herself as to what's good and wholesome in the sight of God. Are you with me? Amen. That's where he said, be transformed by the renewing, the renewing of your mind. You see? And, and, and now here's what can happen. If, if, if she does not renew her mind, but allow the old ways of what she come out of, she will end up finding herself close to and operating just like what she was brought out of. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? And so now she cannot inherit the blessings of God until she understands that she has been separated unto God and God is responsible for promoting her are you hearing him it's not man it is God responsible for promoting her God bless you you may take your seat come on give the Lord a hand clap for them so holiness is separation we were called out of a dark life so we no longer are to function as people of darkness in other words, I remember God said to me one time, he said, he said, you can teach this generation to hate sin. Yes. So we must learn to hate sin. But in order to hate it, you must find out what is sin. That's right. When you look into the word of God, you begin to find out what pleases the Lord. Just like the example that Walter gave, we find that murmuring and complaining does not please God. Amen. So if we do it anyhow, then we're sinning. Yeah. Isn't that right? And the Bible says, be sure your sins, sins will find you out. What are you? I'm trying to share with you, what, the, the, the Lord wants to take us 
deeper deeper and higher but there has to be understanding as to what's acceptable to the Lord God in other words Israel didn't just go around in the wilderness for 40 years for, for no reason God was trying to get them to understand certain things and so they can continue at every junction they murmured and complained now so that what that tells me is this year that if someone is constantly murmuring and complaining then the Lord wants it to stop well why do people murmur and complain we said it before. It is out of the abundance of the heart, of the heart the that a person speak. Yes. Are, are you with me? If, if, if the scripture says guard your heart, right? Look at somebody say, you got to guard that heart, right? If there's anger, and we've been talking about anger, right? If there's anger, if there's bitterness, if there is pride, if these things are in the heart, then it's going to cause us to speak based on what's in our heart. Are you with me? So if I'm going to change the way I speak and the words that I say, I must change the content of my heart. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says be transformed by the Renewing, renewing of, your mind. of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. So what is the solution? Part of the solution is a renewed mind. Holiness. Somebody say holiness. holiness. So this is, this is what pleased the Lord. So he, he talks about make straight paths for your feet. And uh, don't be like Esau. He didn't value what he had. And because he didn't value what he had, he didn't treat it with the kind of reverence and respect like it came from the Lord. Isn't that yes, right? That's this right. salvation is very important. It is the most precious thing that can ever happen to you and I. So we must treat it with utmost respect and treat God with gratitude and thankfulness so when you're going when we're going through we must keep that focus and that perspective right yes that we're still saved we're still God's children and he delivered us still from the powers of darkness so this circumstance here is not going to get the best of me it's not going to cause me to complain and get mad at God and get mad with others are you hear what I'm saying Amen. so once that because uh, when we do then we're moving back into what we were delivered out of so holiness is separation. Let me read this portion again. Many, this is what God said to me and I shared it on last week. Many are satisfied with a shallow relationship with God. There are some he calls to a deeper life of holiness and fellowship with God. And he said it's Christ-likeness. That's what he's after. This is the call from heaven. He said, God wants his church better prepared for the coming days ahead. You look at the things that are happening in Ukraine. Who's to say that's going to be the only uh, uh, country or nation that that happens? Who's to say? Yeah. Only God knows. That's right. And if it's not, if that's just a pattern of things to come, the world can be in a very devastating position. Be that as it may, the whole point is the Lord said he wants us prepared, a prepared people. So if God comes tomorrow, if he comes the next day, we're prepared. We are looking yes. for the Lord. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. I, I, I shared this. But there was a lady, a friend of mine. She, her husband was in the military, and uh, he was out, and he hadn't been home in a long while. So finally he wrote, writes and tells her that I'll be home in the next amount of days. So there's some things that was left undone, and, you know, she wasn't able to keep up certain things and the house just wasn't up to standard but when she heard that he was coming home she really began to work she began to tidy up the house and really make some real changes there in the house because she was expecting his return are you hearing me mm -hmm. when we are expecting God's return yes when we live like we God could come at any moment there's certain things we're not going to let just happen 
and keep happening in our lives. Just like, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not he comes or not. But we live in a state of watchfulness, right? Yes. Become watchful and circumspect. We begin to watch and make sure of the things that are around us. And so the bottom line is, is as we're saying, holiness. God says, be holy for I am holy. Holiness is separation in speech. Holiness is separation in spirit, body, soul. It's separation. So God is calling this church for separation, and he's calling his people for separation. You got some minutes. So I was talking to one. We were sitting here really going over this this, this year, stuff that uh, about the, what the word says. And, um, and, uh, and you shared something about when you were going through, you were listening, but you weren't hearing God. And I wrote that down because I felt that was significant. But can you just elaborate on it? And then it was only when you got that. You share that, would you? I was sharing with him, sometimes we are hearing the word of God, but we're not listening. And I remember uh, I could hear God, but I wasn't listening to God. And so I began to pray about that. And I began to ask the Lord, I said, I want to know how to hear your voice. And a lot of people want to hear God speaking to them. They hear God speaking through the word, and but there's a time in your relationship with God that God will speak to you directly, and I wanted to hear his voice. And so he, t he uh, taught me through, um, what was uh, Elijah, the book of Elijah, how to hear God. And uh, so Elijah was in a cave, and he was expecting to hear from God, get direction. And so he was in a cave, so he thought God was coming in the wind, but God said, I'm not in the wind. And then uh, he sent uh, the wind, and what else was it? An earthquake. He won't in the earthquake. But God came to him in a very faint, still, small voice. Mm -hmm. And he had to attend his ear. To hear that voice. Inclined his ear. Inclined his ear to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And when he did, he got the direction that he needed. He could hear from God. So God said to me, he said, you have to listen, learn to listen. And all the clamor and stuff going around, you have to be attentive to what God, I'm saying to you. And I trained myself with the help of the Lord while I was in prayer to silence of my thoughts, not be distracted, and I purpose to listen to God. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I did that, some, and, and, and sometime I would be in prayer, and I heard nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I began to sh try to steal more and more, steal myself. And... You know how we go to God and we praying all over the place and for everything and everybody. And, um, and then we get up, we finish. We ain't heard nothing God said to us. Mm -hmm. And that's how I used to do my prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when I begin to still myself mm -hmm. and not talk so much mm -hmm. and begin to listen mm -hmm. to what God had to say to me and he, to my amazement, he began to hear. He began to speak. Mm -hmm. And I could hear him. Mm -hmm. And so, I, so in prayer, I learned to hear his voice. So then when I would be out about my business, when God was speaking to me, even if I was busy, I could hear him. Mm -hmm. I could hear him speaking. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, that was significant for me because mm -hmm. I want to know what God was saying. I was in, in, the, in the bathroom this morning getting ready, and God began to speak mm -hmm. about a person's situation. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, God is speaking. Mm -hmm. But if we are not listening, mm -hmm. 
He's speaking and we ain't hearing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's important to hear yes. what God has to say to you. Sometimes he wants to speak to you and it's not about you. It might be about somebody else that he want to bless or he want to strengthen or he want to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But being able to hear him is important. And so sometimes we come to church Sunday after Sunday, we hear the preach word, we get excited, we are built up, and then we go back home, and it's like, we come back, it's like God didn't say what God said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, where's the joy? Mm -hmm. Just because of the enemy put up a flag, mm -hmm. it, it's not supposed to take a joy. Because we miss a meal or don't have money to catch a bus or whatever, God is the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He remains the same. He ain't changed. Mm -hmm. Our circumstances are changed, but if we be faithful to be thankful, mm -hmm. God will open the door for us. That's true. Hallelujah. That's true. Yeah, somebody come right back. Here, brother, sister, here's a couple of dollars. Mm -hmm. You ain't asking nobody for nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're just applying a principle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of praising God and yes. being thankful and turn it over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. God, I need, I should do this. I said, Daddy, I don't have no money today. I was broke. Mm -hmm. I said, Daddy, and I was talking to God. Mm -hmm. I don't have no money. Mm -hmm. And before that day was out, somebody came, would come by and give me, if, if it want $20, sometimes it was $100. You know, sometimes I had a bill to pay, mm -hmm. and God would lace uh, me on somebody's heart, and they would pay my bill for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the point. Learning to listen. So that's the point that I wanted her to reiterate, is that for each one of us, we're born of the Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that's to help us, to lead us and guide us into all of the possession, everything that we are to attain down here. And so our labor now is to learn to listen to God. No matter what situation we're in, when we train ourselves to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, then, and we respond to it, we're going to get through it. And, and I remember the situation that I was going through, and it was just so frustrating, just so frustrating. And, you know, I'm doing my prayer and so on. And so it looked like God wasn't saying whatever he was saying. I wasn't tuned in enough. So it kept bothering me, just bothering me. And so one day I just got desperate. I was like, God, something's got to give. So as a result of it, I said, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to turn my plate down. I'm just going to take some time. I really need to find out what God's saying because this situation just keeps going on. And to my amazement, as I really talked to God and, and had that time for God, God began to speak to me. And he began to share with me about, he said, it's not about you, it's about the kingdom. Yes. And he said, there's some things that I'm going to do, and I need that discipline. I need that discipline because there are forces that are going to fight in the days ahead. And if you have that discipline, even when you go through things that, very, that frustrate you and you don't like, yes. you're going to keep your focus yes. because you understand it's something bigger than you. That's right. But if you don't learn that, then you get frustrated and you begin to speak and say things that's contrary. And so he said, I need that discipline. Yes. And so many times the chastening of the Lord, he allowed things to happen with hopes that we'll come to him and just get desperate to the point where we says, okay, I need to find out what God is saying to me. What he don't want us to do is just keep going through and going through and going through, get frustrating and then sighing. <sighs> you know, he doesn't want that. He wants us to find out what God is saying. This is so important, saints. God is not pleased with just going around over and over again, the same old trial, same vexations. God wants us to grow to the point so that we, when you find out something's going on, if that thing don't move and it's frustrating you, you're either going to turn your plate down, 
You either going to set aside some time, some real quality time for the Lord because you know that God is faithful. And as you set that time aside for God and God is going to speak to you and when you get that revelation from God and then you begin to act on that revelation, then here come the help that comes from God. So God wants us to learn this thing about him, right? Because they that know their God, shall be strong. You can't be strong if you don't know God. If you don't trust him in a situation, you feel like, okay, I can't even, I don't know what the Lord is saying. And, you know, have you ever asked somebody, what is God saying? I, say, I don't know what God is saying. I don't have a clue. And I used to, when I lived, when I grew up with uh, some pastors there, they would walk around one, my pastor, and then he had another uh, uh, mentor, uh, not a mentor, but a uh, uh, co-laborer. And they're both from overseas, and these men were really men of prayer. So when he would take me sometime and we would go in fellowship and when we get with him, he say, so, so what's the Lord saying? And I thought that was like, can you know what God is saying like that? You know, it was just, and, uh, but I understood, I'm understanding now is that, you know, you can know what God is saying. You really can. If you're going through, what is God saying to the church? What is God saying concerning these times? You can know if you take that time and you really want to know. You want a God to change it. So I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying to us that there's some situations that many are going through that he really want to get involved. But he wants us to take the time to do just like what we want to share. Don't just accept the situation. Come before the Lord and ask him. Talk to him. Say, God, tell me what, is there something you want to teach me? Is it something that I'm not listening? Is it somewhere I'm not listening? Is it somewhere I'm not paying attention that this thing is vexing me like that? Be honest and be sincere. Yes. And watch and see what God will begin to do. God will begin to talk. And when he gives you that answer, I promise you it'll bring relief. Yes. It'll bring relief to your suffering and joy. And then when you obey it, it's going to get God's help. So, so the, 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 the conclusion is this. He said, follow peace with all men in holiness without which no one shall see the Lord. When Esau came out, he was dry and he was thirsty. He was tired and weary. And so that natural state, he allowed that natural state to dictate to him what something that was more valuable than that. And so what he did, he says, this thing ain't doing me no good. He gave it up. You know and so has. sometimes in situations, brothers and sisters, we may say things, get upset with God, not understanding that there's an answer. There's a solution to this problem. And God wants us to find it in him. That makes sense, y'all? Yes. All right, so God, Father, we want to thank you right now. Yes, Lord. There's holiness, the way of holiness. It's a separate life. Thank you. Father, I realize that some of us are going through and there's something that you are, are attempting to communicate to all of us. Thank you, Lord. Which will bring us higher. Yes. Which will take us higher, Lord God. And so, Father, I pray that we now will be attentive to what you're saying. Give full attention, Lord, and take full heed to what you're saying. Whatever you're saying, God, that it'll become crystal clear to us, Lord God, so that we'll be content in hearing and understanding the mind of God. Yes, Lord. And walking with God. Thank you, Jesus. We'll stay in step with him. We'll stay in union with him for God to do what he's planning to do. I thank you now. I give your name to praise. It's the way of holiness. Yes, Lord. Lord, if it means loving one another, then that's what you want. Yes. We agree. We open our hearts. Yes, we do. Father, do what you only can do. Only you. Bring us up to standard. Some, Lord God, have been hearing and some are enjoying their Christian experience. But then not everyone is, Lord. Some are not enjoying their Christian experience. But for us, God, today. Yes, Lord. It's your desire that we would be a happy and a thankful people. Oh, God, we praise you. Oh! Glory, 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 glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because that reflects 
the God that we're serving. Thank you, Lord. Would we stand together? I just want to interject this, and it's what the Lord just put in my spirit. If you had a celebration, I won't call it a party, just a celebration, and you was the only one was going because somebody qualified you. Would you be happy? You there by yourself, not a Brayton, by yourself, lonely, nobody to talk to. But you made the achievement so that there was a celebration. And the Lord is saying sometimes it's like that. You know, when you're rejoicing and you're experiencing the blessings and, and the benefits and of God and you're just having a good time, but your brothers and sisters and relatives and friends, they're not enjoying it. So they not, you can't really enjoy it by yourself. But when your brothers and sisters and friends and acquaintances when they can celebrate with you, then you're happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody is experiences the same benefits of that celebration. The food, the entertainment, and whatever. But if you're there by yourself, you can't, it's no fun celebrating by yourself. And so God don't want some of us to go. He wants all of us to go. That's my point. And that's the point he just made in, uh, in my spirit. Yeah, he want us all to be able to celebrate and to celebrate each other. But if I'm celebrating by myself or one or two and everybody else is, you know, in a different place, it don't make you happy. So it puts a lull in the celebration. Amen. Amen. So, St. Celeste, I admonish you. You know, and let God be all that he can be in your life. Amen. And you'll have peace. you enjoy others better. You can love better. God will love through you. He'll help you to love the unlovable. Amen. He'll give you that grace because he will help us of one another. And he wants his love to work through us. Amen.